Okay. Okay. Hey guys, we're in the middle of a series called Every Day, and it's about the things you can do every day to grow faith that goes with you everywhere into everything. To start today, I've got a question for you. What's one thing you really, really want right now? Like, the thing you want so badly, you do just about anything to make it happen. Take a second and tell the person sitting next to you. In middle school, I wanted to maintain good grades, good mental health, and strong friendships. Now, I knew I wouldn't be able to achieve all these goals on my own, because let's face it, being a teenager and going into middle school is hard enough. Now, adding all of these goals, hopes, and desires, it's nearly impossible to do it on your own. So I prayed and I asked God to help me through my thoughts, my experiences, and my words. What you really want right now might not be the same as what I really wanted, but I'm sure you handle it the same kind of way. You think about it all the time, you do whatever you can to make it happen, and you even go as far to talk to God about it. I think it's pretty common for us to look to God when we want or need something, and it's normal to go to God with all of our prayer requests, thoughts, and even questions. Trust me, you're not alone. As we said, this is a series about everything, everyday things we can do to connect with God and see our faith grow in new ways. One of those things is talking to God through prayer. Prayers are one of the, those parts of your faith that seems simple, but as it turns out, is way more complicated than you might have thought. We go to God with our wishes, wants, and hopes. We talk to God about the things we need and the ways we have, but sometimes that's where it ends. We toss our prayers up to God, but it feels like God doesn't listen, so we toss God aside. This can happen in big and small ways. Maybe you're praying to pass a test, um, finally be allowed on TikTok. <sighs> Sorry, one second. Okay, or maybe you're praying for the healing of someone you love, your parents to work it out, or friendship drama to be resolved. No matter what it is, you pray and pray and pray that things will work out the way you want them to. And when it doesn't, it feels awful. It feels like the, that God's not really listening. This happens... When this happens, we may even start to question not just our prayers, but the God we're talking to in the prayers. We start to wonder if God hears my prayers, does God care about me, my feelings, or my experiences, and is God even listening? If you've ever asked one of these questions, you're not alone. We've all wondered how prayer can actually help us connect with God when it feels like there's not a God at all. How are we supposed to connect with God through prayer if the con connection feels broken? What if I told you I think the reason we feel this way about prayer is less about God and more about ourselves? Here's what I mean. Think of the most important relationships in your life. You, the people you're close to and the connection you have. I doubt you spend every FaceTime, Hangout, or even Snapchat asking them for things you want. Why, why is that? Well, probably because they don't have the ability to make that happen for you, but because you know there's more to a relationship than that. You want them to know more about you, and you want to know more about them. Because that's how your real relationship works, and that's the same kind of relationship God wants to have with you. Maybe we need to approach talking to God with a different mindset. Early in the first centuries, there was a guy named Paul who had wild experiences with, experiences with Jesus. Paul's life completely changed after this. Paul knew that a relationship with God was better than anything he could have asked for. And he wanted to make sure that the other believers knew the same thing. Paul spent a lot of time writing letters to the early churches to encourage them. What's interesting is that at the same time, Paul wrote to these small, growing faith communities. So many of them were going through a really hard time. The Roman government was coming for for the people and trying to keep them from sharing about God, and they were being threatened every day. It should come to no surprise that the people Paul was writing to in, at the time were praying. They were asking God to help them, save them, and protect them. Paul wrote to one of these churches in a town called Ephesus to let them know that he was praying too, only his prayers were different. They were so different. In fact, I think they can help us change the way we approach talking to God. Here's what he wrote, if you want to turn to your Bibles, it's Ephesians 1.16. I pray for you constantly, asking God for the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you, 
spiritual wisdom and insight so you might grow in your knowledge of God, Ephesians 1, 16 and 17. And did you catch that Paul didn't pray for the stuff you probably thought he would? He didn't pray for circumstances to change their, or that their situations would end. Instead, Paul prayed that they would grow in their faith and stay connected to God no matter what. Let me break it down this way. Prayer is about recognizing our need for God and its acknowledgement that we don't know the best and we don't know the rest. All, with all the prayers Paul could have prayed here, I have to wonder why he chose this one. Well, I can't be certain because obviously he isn't here with us today, but I think the reason is because Paul knew that there's more to prayer than just asking God for help. It's so much more than wants, needs, and requests. While those things definitely matter, what matters the most in a relationship with God is prayer. It's a big part about ultimately getting to know and connect better with God. The good news is that nothing stands in our way here. We can talk to God every single day. And that's what prayer is. And when you pray, you're talking to God about your life. You're telling God what's happening in your world and asking for the wisdom to figure it out. You're connecting with God to build and grow your faith and that's what a real relationship is, whether you recognize it or not. <laughs> and please hear me when I say I know it's disappointing when the things you pray for don't happen. And that it can make connecting with God feel even more complicated. But part of staying in and growing a relationship with God is staying in the conversation when prayers aren't answered and circumstances don't change. Okay, let's change the way we think about prayer. Let's think of having a conversation with God. This week, I want you to commit to giving prayer a try. Remember, you can talk to God about anything. The goal here is simply to show up and connect with God. I th some of us have been taught that praying means bowing our heads, closing our eyes, and thinking silently to ourselves. But that might not be how it works for you. If you want to write your prayers down, sing a song, or even just talk out loud, that's cool. You can do that. It's whatever works for you and what you feel comfortable talking to God with. If you're not exactly sure what to say in your conversations, here are a few ideas to get you started. First, thank God for the good things in your life, big or small. Stuff you're grateful for, and then get real with God about what's on your mind. Share the good and the bad. If, you're, if you got a good grade, made a new friend, or saw something good happen, then tell God. If you're concerned about a sick family member dealing with friend drama or struggling to get past a mistake you made, tell God. Be real and honest about what's on your mind when you pray. Okay. And ask God to step in and fix things that feel broken. Asking God for the... Asking God for what you need is a great way to remind yourself that God is listening, and he's always going to be there for you. Even if it feels like he's not, he is. He's always there. And God wants you to feel more comfortable talking to him. Okay, so the more you talk to God, the more you'll trust God, and then the more you trust God, the more you'll want to have a good relationship with him. And that's the kind of relationship he wants with you, one where you know you can talk to him every day. One of the best places to start when it comes to prayer is our small groups. Groups are created to be a space where you can not only connect with God, but you can also connect with the other people around you. Your small group leaders are great people to help you navigate something just like this. So I hope you'll dive into a conversation about talking to God today with them and the rest of your group. When you go to group, think about the question, what's one thing you can talk to God about this week? 